and welcome to Whitton Park. This is the home of was uh, the Fielding family. I just want to run you through uh, a bit of the history of the park and the, and the Fielding family. Now, on the site behind me, there used to be a very large house uh, called Whitton House, which was built <coughs> in the 1800s by the Fielding family and later on uh, extended by Joseph Fielding. Uh, who were all uh, wealthy textile merchants at that time. Now, just to give you an idea of the size of the house, the 1859 plans that I found, there was a house, it says there was a house here uh, with 18 bedrooms on top, on the upper floor. Now, the features of the house was called, uh, there was one main feature on the roof area called uh, Celestri, which was a set of roof windows pointing which illuminated the central grand staircase of the house which was on the site. Um, also on the ground floor of the house was the recreational uh, spaces such as uh, a study which you would probably possibly expect as well as the billiards room. Now there was one feature which I find quite interesting uh, when you look at the plans. It shows that there were, on the house there was attached uh, a room called the monkey house and in this monkey house there was two rooms uh, labelled as cages so it looks like it, they possibly had uh, some pet monkeys as well on, on this site which is quite in, an interesting thought. Now obviously a uh, house of this size needed uh, a large staff to, uh, to help staff it and help uh, run the house for the building family. In the 1851 census, it lists that there were 16 servants living on this site, on this site with the uh, family of Joseph and Elizabeth Fielding and their seven children. Now, as well as a uh, large staff in the house, there's also a uh, large staff of uh, workmen to run the uh, estate ar uh, around us, which is uh, the size of 485 acres. Now, Whitton Estate Buildings Department employed 60 workmen in maintenance and repair work for the associated farms, shops and houses around this area that they owned at the time. They also owned the um, Fielding Orange pub at Venice Gold. Uh, as you can see, the house is surrounded by trees, uh, which uh, also has up on that side, uh, the remains of uh, garden terracing as well, which it was up, up on the uh, top there, which are all, uh, still there, if you look hard enough, you, you, you can still find it. It also had uh, rose gardens around there as well, as uh, a farmhouse as well. Uh, still existing on this site, which I'll show you later, is the uh, large uh, lily pond. And there is uh, also the walled vegetable garden which still exists as well on, on this side as well. Now, uh, Joseph Fielding, he was uh, well known for his um, uh, eating conservatory which he, he used to grow his prize winning uh, pineapples, nectarines and uh, apricots which uh, uh, it sounds quite interesting at that time because I like growing fruit and veg myself at the moment so he, he sounds like an interesting person on that film. Now Joseph uh, Fielding was very influential in the area. Not only was he a wealthy uh, textile merchant, he was also uh, for one year uh, the High Sheriff of Lancashire and for many years he was the Deputy Lieutenant of Lancashire. Now both offices of, the, uh, of those posts uh, are direct representatives of uh, the, the Crown in the service, so we have a direct link to the royal family at that time. Uh, now, Joseph, uh, because he was quite wealthy, he, he donated land and money for the building of uh, and construction of uh, new churches uh, in the area. It was uh, over the, the far side, uh, the Church of St. Mark's, uh, was up on the top. At the hill, there's two churches of St Andrew, and across the road is Old Trinity. Now, uh, unfortunately, St Mark's Church um, closed down uh, for worship, in, and it's no longer used for uh, worshiping at the moment. Uh, 
Now that closed down on the 2nd of November 2014 and uh, the last service there was held by Bishop Julian. Uh, now Joseph Fielding uh, was uh, known for uh, setting up the old uh, Witten Sunday School and the Witten Day School which is over on the other side or the site is anyway. Uh, he also provided sites and land for the building of uh, the East Lancashire uh, Royal Infirmary. He provided land and uh, for the old uh, Blackburn Market Hall and uh, Town Hall, all at reduced rates. That's possibly uh, because of his influence and uh, position in society. It's what we would call mates rates nowadays. So, uh, he, Joseph Fielding died in 1870 and it's reported that the formal procession stretched for about a third of a mile to half a mile long all with uh, the most important dignitaries from the area as they all were uh, attending the funeral and they are buried just awfully as well. Uh, now the inheriting members of the uh, family were at that time was uh, all in the military so they started not spending a lot of time on this site uh, so because they were spending a lot more time abroad and everything so uh, because they weren't spending much time in the house the house and gardens and estate slowly started to decline uh, and then later on in world war ii all the furniture and large numbers of paintings went into storage and uh, wounded servicemen was uh, stationed there to recover from their wounds. What we'll do now, we'll go and have a look at the rest of the site uh, and we'll, I'll show you what else is around there. What I'm going to do now is just go up the old service road uh, which used to service the back of the house as well and uh, what I like to call the, the, the tradesman's entrance. So we'll go and have a look at the rest of the site now. Welcome. This is feature of the uh, property around here is the old ice house. Now, uh, in uh, Joseph Fielding's time, this old room here was packed full of ice, just to be used in the house to keep uh, the food fresh and uh, possibly to put in the drinks, possibly or keeping the champagne on ice. Now, just just give you an idea of the uh, size of the house. I'm five foot seven, and it's roughly my height and it stretches in there for about 25 30 feet so if, imagine that full full of ice you know just 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 waiting to be used uh all the time the, the water that they used to get or the, or the ice where they used to get it from was from the old uh lily pond which again i'll show you later now what intrigues me about this particular room is uh in spring and summer, I, I always wonder how long it would have lasted uh, before it uh, all melted away in spring and summer because this house actually, is actually south facing so when the, the sun was coming up and the sun was glaring on this in, in uh, a morning over spring and summer and that lot, I, I wonder how long it would have, would have took for this house uh, to melt away and all that so that is the ice house there. And the steps have come down because you have to do a slight detour from the uh, service road which I, uh, I came down from the old house because they are repairing the actual road now and they've, uh, they've, they've blocked it off halfway now so we've had to do a detour and we've come through the old uh, garden terrace uh, which is just up here on, on my right hand side uh, now these steps actually uh, go up now into a nice lovely woodland walk which is uh, very uh, good to go up there and there is the remains of the foundations of the old palm house as well which is at, at the top end as well. 
So what we'll do now, we'll go and have a look at the uh, rest of the site and we'll go and have a look at the old coach house, stable block and uh, cart house. So come along and have a look. Behind me, you can see what remains of the um, time of when the Fielder family were in residence here. You can see the old uh, coach house and stable we've got, and uh, just over to my uh, left hand side, you can see the old uh, cart house and vegetable garden, uh, uh, the old vegetable garden. And uh, what he's doing now is uh, con um, some greenhouses. Now, uh, this uh, area now is all uh, well maintained and is used by uh, my school uh, college, uh, Ag agricultural college, now for the students. And they're doing a lot of work at the moment around the area, and that's why uh, they're doing a lot of work on the uh, road at the back of the uh, buildings there at the moment. That's why you have to do a try big to it. Now, over on that far side, uh, there's a project which is going on at the moment. Uh, in the wall garden and greenhouses, a charity called My Place, uh, trying to raise money to uh, take out the old uh, asbestos potting benches at the moment and to try and use that area uh, in the future for uh, community groups uh, and anybody uh, that wants, wants to come down and uh, use it basically. And, uh, sounds like a very good project for uh, people to get involved with. And, uh, you know, if anybody wants to um, donate money for them to uh, try and uh, upgrade those uh, greenhouses, please have a look at the uh, Burton Park website uh, and look for My Place uh, charity. What we'll do now uh, is we'll go uh, from this area and we'll go over now to the uh, old uh, lily pond and I can show you what uh, that area uh, is looking like and uh, where we used to get the ice from. This is the Willy Pond uh, in Blayton Park where they used to uh, collect all the ice uh, for the uh, ice house that uh, you saw earlier. If you can look over my shoulder uh, where those ducks are, if you can see the, those ducks, that's where the steps are where, where you actually go into the water where they must have dragged the ice out from. Now, a lot of the trees around here uh, <coughs> were all planted uh, at the time when the house was uh, being built as well by the Fielding family. Uh, the largest of the uh, wooded areas around here is one of my particular favourites and that's uh, the Billings Wood area which is right at the top of the uh, estate at, uh, on, the, on the top of the hill over there. Now in uh, 2014 Salford University along with uh, the students from uh, my school of college did a excavation of various parts of this site and found uh, lots of old uh, pottery and uh, green roof tiles and uh, glass uh, dating back to when the house was uh, still in use and it also found still on the site at the top there extensive uh, foundations and cellar work still there at the moment all buried obviously on, on the ground. Uh, now what we're going to go and do is we're going to go and have a look at the um, old uh, fields now, or the, the playing fields, and I'll continue the talk from over there. In 1946, returning prisoners of war from the, the Second World War were uh, put into a civilian resettlement unit 
here on these fields. Uh, now the courses that the uh, were in were lasted for about 13 weeks, which allowed them then to uh, readjust back into civilian life and get back to some normality after being in uh, the prisoner of war camps uh, in whatever country they, they were in at that particular time. Uh, now later in that same year, 1946, uh, members of the uh, General Anders Polish Army were stationed here for two years as they left later in uh, 1948 and then the part returned to as it is now. Soon after the end of the, the Second World War, Blackburn Corporation was keen to buy the uh, Whitton Park estate off the Fielding family uh, and open it up to the uh, general public. The asking price of the estate at the time was £64,000 and this figure seemed out of reach of the corporation at the time until a local patron, a Mr R. E. Hart, stepped forward with a donation of £35,000 to help the corporation reach the goal. And in 1947, the contract was signed and the whole of the estate entered into the hands of the corporation who held it on behalf of the people. Witten House, unfortunately, it was not to be saved. Dry rot had set in around this stage uh, throughout the property and had a massive repair bill of £11,000 at the time uh, and no agreed use for the, uh, such a big haul uh, meant it was demolished in 1952. Uh, the estate uh, became uh, designated a country park way back in 1973 with a grant from the Countryside Commission and as you can see behind me it keeps being improved year on year as uh, these uh, current G, uh, 3G pictures was uh, installed uh, last year during uh, the lockdown periods uh, last year by the council. So it, they keep improving the facilities for the people of Blackburn and uh, making it uh, a park to be proud of and uh, to come down and to do your exercise, uh, even if that is in COVID times. Behind me is the uh, parish church of uh, St Mark, which I've already mentioned in the in this video. That uh, closed down uh, in 2014 for uh, public worship. Now, during the making of this uh, video, uh, people have heard that I'm, I'm actually doing it, and they've warned me some uh, of the old parish magazines from St Mark's. Uh, in my hand, I've got uh, the parish magazine. Uh, dated June 2013, which was the 175th anniversary of, of the church at that time. I've also been loaned the um, Paris magazine from June 2014, which was the uh, final magazine for uh, St. Mark's Day. And, uh, I've also got the final service of worship, which took place on the 2nd of November. Uh, 2014, which was held by Bishop Julian. So, I'm just going to read out of the uh, a few interesting points out of the uh, 175th anniversary, as it's got uh, quite a few interesting points uh, for the Fielding family. Now, the south transept, which is on that side of the building, is uh, known as the Fielding uh, transept, which uh, were uh, the Fielding family, Joseph and Elizabeth, uh, all their children and uh, their servants sat during the uh, services uh, when they uh, attended the, the uh, church. Uh, in 1845, uh, the St Mark's parish had three day schools, uh, Whitton Day School, uh, 1833 they set up uh, Whittenfold School and in 1845 
uh, Britain School of Industry or Girls School, uh, which was situated just down that particular road, just down the, the dead side there. Now, on Christmas morning, 1851, the two daughters of Joseph and Elizabeth, uh, Louisa and Frances, uh, who were both Sunday school teachers, uh, distributed buns and books to more than 300 school uh, scholars on Christmas morning. And during the previous week, they've given out over 200 uh, buns and uh, books to uh, day schools of uh, Whitton School. Christmas time of 1879, uh, Sunday school teachers, uh, estate gardeners and wives were entertained to tea at uh, Witten House, just further down the road, which I, I showed you earlier. Uh, and they were given presents, uh, which was distributed from the Christmas tree, which was located in the laundry at that time, uh, followed by singing and games. Now, in 1876, uh, 700 uh, scholars and uh, parishioners of St Mark's uh, had their annual field day in Whitton Park. Uh, the procession from the church behind me, down this path, uh, was headed by the workhouse band. And, uh, buns were served and coffee served on barrels positioned on uh, the backs of uh, the Twaits' trays at that time. Now, during that festival, uh, they tried to inflate a, a balloon uh, and, and tried to uh, get it up, up in the air, uh, but it caught fire, unfortunately, and before uh, they could uh, grab it and uh, put it out, it actually uh, took off and, and it travelled for quite quite some distance, I believe. Where it landed, I don't know, but it'd be interesting if anyone knows where it landed, so if you could get in touch, I'd be interested in that. Uh, now the last public engagement of Joseph Fielding, just uh, weeks before his death in 1870, was to uh, attend a uh, bazaar in the uh, town hall to raise money for the uh, St Mark's Vicarage. Well, that's uh, some very interesting facts there. So what we'll do now, we'll just go off into Britain uh, Park, uh, uh, a quiet location, just to. Uh, finish off the video, it is a bit, a bit noisy behind me at the moment, so we'll just go into Britain Park to uh, conclude it. So what can we learn from Joseph Fielding and uh, the Fielding family today? Well, they were obviously a fairly wealthy uh, family to walk away, and they used their uh, wealth to, to good, as far as I can tell. Uh, obviously the uh, building of the three churches that I've mentioned and uh, the local infrastructure project that uh, they put the money into such as the building the uh, the old uh, Blackburn Hospital, the uh, Blackburn Royal Infirmary as it was known which is now uh, knocked down, there's housing on that site now. Now there's one first which comes to mind as I go through the, the history of the Fielding family and that's Matthew 6 uh, verse 21 for where your treasure is there your heart will be also I think that's uh, a good first for Joseph Fielding because to me the obviously about the treasures into building these uh, local infrastructure projects uh, such as the hospital and uh, uh, the, the churches as well and they must have put their part into building some of these churches as well because they uh, attended church quite regularly and obviously they, they used their wealth to give out uh, Christmas presents and they were very generous in, in doing uh, uh, other things around the pure, uh, around the area such as like uh, days out for the staff or, or on the park as well. So what can we do today in the uh, or walk away with. Well, for me, it's quite obvious really, no matter where we are in society, whether we're low down or high up, we can use our influence with the people around us, uh, just by talking to them about the uh, Bible, uh, what we're passionate about the Bible, 
and uh, what uh, we believe in uh, God's word, which it, it, it's a good starting point really. And if you just start with one person in our local circles and just watch the um, the ripples of those conversations just ripple out and uh, just see how far they go uh, with the people around us, you know, it, it'd be quite interesting if we can get one or two people interested in uh, reading the Bible. That would be uh, a great start, we're just having a conversation with one, one or two people it, and that would be uh, very good uh, with uh, like trying to get them uh, to know the Word of God. Well, I hope you've all enjoyed uh, this video and I hope you've uh, learned at least something new about uh, Wetton Park in the Field and Family. It's been a very uh, good and enjoyable uh, project for me to do. Um, now, at the end of the video, what I'm going to do is just put some uh, photographs up of the uh, church magazines from uh, St. Mark's with uh, some of the pictures as well. So, I hope, hope you enjoy them. Now, during the uh, process of um, doing these videos uh, and in the current climate of uh, Black Lives Matter, I must cover the, the following uh, subject. Uh, now, over the, the, the course of the um, research I've done, I've come across five different websites all giving conflicting information with uh, possible um, ownership uh, by Joseph Fielding with uh, plantations in Jamaica and uh, possibly uh, owning uh, slaves over there. Now, I've obviously seen these five different uh, websites and none of them, uh, well, they all give uh, conflicting information. They don't have uh, the same information on, on each uh, website, so I can't actually say which one's the true one or which one's not saying the, the truth. So I can actually include that in this video. Now, if someone can come up with some conclusive proof uh, and information, then that I'd be interested in that. But uh, I can't include that in this video because it's so conflicting and I don't know what's true and what's not true. So I just wanted to include that in this video uh, for the, uh, to cover the Black Lives Matter. Okay, thanks for that.